Oh, um, it was kind of midway through the year. I got a phone call from actually from my old man. He's like, um, oh, I got a phone call from Gavin Orr, um, who was. I think Jason Tomalolo's manager um, asked me if I was keen to have another fight. I was like, yeah, like, why not? Like, it'll be, um, yeah, it'd be good. Like, obviously, we'll get everything kind of sorted, um, preparing, like, I'm going to fight Jace. Um, I had it all agreed. <laughs> got the contract through, was ready to sign it. And I, uh, as I was signing, it, I got to the last page and I, I noticed the fighter that I was fighting for was <laughs> Nelson. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, ah, oh, they've, no, they've sent me the wrong contract. Like that's sweet. I'll just, I'll, I'll let Dad know. No, he can, he can get it sent back to me. And they're like, uh, no, no, uh, no, no, mate. Uh, w- you know, we were going to fight you with Jace, but um, unfortunately, we've had a thirty to forty contracts that we've sent out to Nelson and they've all like not got back to like not even one of him responded. Not even a response. Not even a response, oh, bro. Wow. So not even a response. So not even like a no oh, we can't or anything like that. Just not even a response. So me in my I don't know, like you said, dumb, crazy thing of like, oh, like it'll be sweet. Like brave, brave. I'll give the I'll give the man I'll give the man a fight. Like, you know, I know that he's wanted to fight for two or three years. He's um you know, he's trained and wanted to do it forever. So I was like yeah, like let's let's do it. Like it'll be uh, it'll be mad. And uh, I think that was the last time I obviously <laughs> really <laughs> thought about it until I got in the ring. <laughs> actually, no, it was until weigh in. Actually, until weigh in, mm. I was like, I remember him on the field. You know, like when we're all on the field, and we're together and stuff. Like, yeah, he's big, he's big. But I'm like, he's not that big. Yeah. And then we we stood near him at weigh in, and he got on the scales, and I was like. Bro, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> he is not just big, he's huge. Yeah. And um, like I'll get on the scales and uh, they're like, What are you like, what are you weighing? And I was like, Oh, I've been trying to put some weight on maybe like one twelve. Like, yeah, yeah, sweet. Yeah. You you just hit a one eleven. I'm like, Yeah, sweet. So one eleven, six foot one, sweet. Nelson gets on and um, I'm pretty sure he said like one twenty five, one twenty eight, and the scales just were poof. Went straight to 140, and I was like, oh, oh so he weighs 140, bro. It was 100, I think they told me it was 139.8 or something. Wow, yeah, 139. And like to be that big and, and mobile and agile, like he is, like he's a big man, bro. yeah. And he's reached like, <laughs> like just <laughs> like, don't, don't worry about Jordan, bro. Yeah. Like, his reach was huge, oh, so bro, but crazy. that's kind of how it went. Like, I thought I was fighting Jason, I um, kind of. Nels just kind of got you know thrust on me. Yeah, um, but obviously, obviously, respect for that. You sort of talked about like I was going to roll into that anyway, yeah. and I played against Nelson in, in the past. And when you go out, you feel a right on a football field because yeah. one, you've basically played the game your whole life. Yeah. Two, you got some guys around you yeah. as well. What was the big differences between rugby league and boxing? And I've heard guys talk about boxing, and they say it's almost more exciting because yeah. you can only rely on yourself when you walk out. Yeah, it's all about you. But I've also heard the other side when yeah. you jump in the ring is like you look around, you know, got your boys with you. What, yeah. was, what was the big difference? Well, yeah, when you're on the field, obviously, you know, you, you you have that kind of 12 other players. So, like, you know, when you – if you make, like, you know, a little stuff up or something like that, you know someone's there to cover you and you can do that. But, you know, in the, in boxing, it's kind, of, it's kind of very isolating. Like, I actually had a really good team behind me and we trained the whole time together. Uh, we did everything together. You know, we did recovery together, everything. Um, and then – you know, on the night you get up there, you, I sat down, you know, we had dinner, we're always together and stuff like that. And then you forget how actually like isolating boxing is. Like when you're boxing and it's just you and you know it's only one, you know, one-on-one, um, the the mentality you have to have is so different. And I think I, I kind of, I, I forgot about that because I was, even though I, I knew that I wasn't in my team, I still had such a great team behind me. Mm. And then, um, you know, you get in the ring and, you know, it's just every little thing that you do, it has to be, like, perfect because if you don't, they just make you pay for it. And, now, you know, and that, and that was what my thing was is I, I can't stuff up because if I do, Nelson, you know. It's a big consequence. It's a uh, big consequence, yeah. yeah. And, and a few times it happened, you know, in, in the fight. And, and I didn't even realise, like, a few times like you know where i'd got hit or something like that like it all because it all happens so fast too and you have like a split second so i think the difference is there's like you end up being you feel very isolated and you feel very like it's all on you like yeah because i also didn't want to let my team down i remember you know after um the fire got stopped and i knew i lost and stuff i just turned to my trainer and that and i was just like fuck i'm sorry and he's like what are you sorry for i was like well 
yeah, because I'll, I'll, I'll let you down. And he just looked at me and goes, shut up. Like, yeah. you didn't let me down. Like, because that was my thing. Because, it, like, it, my mentality is still I'm a team first person. You know, that's what I've always grown up to be. So, like, that was my thing is that I still let my team down even though I lost. Mm. So I think that's the biggest difference. It's like you go from a team thing to being very isolated uh, and just kind of one-out mentality. Yeah. All right, so he clips you. Do you remember that? Or do you, is, is it like, you know, in footy and you get like sort of those head knocks, is it a similar feel? Because bro, an uppercut, and especially from him, yeah. that's a scary thought. So I don't. So, <laughs> I don't, and I swear to God, this is what I thought happened. It was, <laughs> I, so in my game plan, he's so big, bro. Get inside. We get inside yeah, and yeah. get in, and if you get in there, get in fast because don't give him the reach, don't do it. You know, throw a double jab so he's kind of on the little bit back foot, get in tight and just stay there. So I've kind of come in and I, like what I thought I'd done is like half tri- – like that I tripped over mm. and then I got – like I bounced straight back up and I was like, no, nah, I'm sweet. The rest like, are you all right? And I'm like, yeah, mate, I'm sweet. I tripped over and he just kind of giggled like <laughs> – like, no, you didn't. <laughs> I was looking at the ref. I was like, mate, I swear to God, I'm like, I'm sweet. I fell over. Anyway, so we like had the rest of the fight like I'm sweet. And then after, they're like, bro, how did you get up from that? I'm mm. like, from what? They're like, that first uppercut. And I was like, what are you talking about? They're like, <laughs> they showed me and I was like, holy. <laughs> I swear to God, I thought I tripped over. Oh. But I reckon I probably just tripped over my feet after getting put in space from the uppercut from uh, from Mel. So. Yeah, it's scary, huh? Oh, how, how strong he is. Um, do you see a future in boxing for him? Oh, for him, 100%. I know it runs in his family and I know, you know, he, he, and that's what, like, I caught up with him after the fight. And, and I saw that post he'd done about yeah, you, but that's cool. Like. Yeah, it is. And I've got so much respect for him, even more after the fight for what he did after the fight that he did in the fight. Like, the first thing he did, he's come, like, he come up to me, my team, he you know, gave us all a cuddle, said thank you. But he went up to my partner and, oh, was, okay. and gave her a cuddle and said thank you for, let, like, letting your man, like, get in and, and do that. Um, like, no one wanted to do it and you let your man, because he obviously had seen the, the newspaper's article about my baby and, mm. and what I went through and, and how hard it was to do it. And he just said, like, I, I don't know why you did it, but, like, thank you. And that is the respect I have for him even more now than the boxing part. But I know that it runs in his, you know, his family, his blood, and it's what he wants to do. And he literally said to me after, he goes, bro, if I lost that, I would have lost, I would have had nothing after footy. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, like that's what he wants to do, yeah. which is fair. Yeah. And that was, I think that was probably like one of the biggest things for me. It's, I don't, I don't want to box. No. Like, well, I just, I literally just did it for a challenge to get fit, to train, to show my kids that, you know, you don't have to do just one thing in life. Like you can have so many different opportunities and when they come up, you just take them. Even if it is against the biggest guy in Australia, you just, you know, you get out and you do it. But he, that's what he wants to do. And, bro, for how big he is and how mobile he is, like, you know, and, and the, how hard he trained, like, and he probably would have only realistically been able to train maybe one, one or two weeks yeah. properly because he, like, he made the semis almost, almost all the way through. So to still have that agility and boxing and skill, like, yeah, a massive future, I reckon, a massive future. Uh, uh, 